Our discussion is on module 2, which is geometric design of highways. So before we start with our discussion, let us try to identify the intended learning outcomes for this module. So identify the geometric design considerations for the vertical alignment. Identify the geometric design consideration for the horizontal alignment. Identify the geometric design consideration for combined vertical and horizontal alignment. Evaluate the geometric design for track system. Define the basic properties for gradient, curves, and super elevation for railroads. Identify the alignment consideration of railroads. So when we speak about geometric design, it deals with the dimensioning of elements of highways. So we're considering here the vertical and horizontal curve, the cross-section, track climbing lanes, bicycle path, and parking facilities. So the characteristic character with the characteristic of the driver, pedestrian, vehicle, and roads. So for example, the length of the vertical road or radii of circular curves are determined to assure that the premium stopping site distance is provided to highway users for the design speed of the highway. The fundamental objective of the geometric design is to produce a smooth, flowing and safe highway. So basically, that's the basic objective for uh, the geometric design of the highway. The basic objective is to produce a smooth, flowing and safe highway. So facility and objective that can only be achieved by providing a consistent design standard that satisfies the characteristic of the driver and the vehicle that use the road. So basically, to obtain this, to satisfy this objective for the geometric design of the highway, we should be, the designer should be consistent on the design standard. So it has to satisfy the characteristic of the driver and as well as the vehicle that uses the road. So those are the main consideration in the geometric design of the highway. So basically, for our standards, uh, used on the geometric design of our highway, we make use of the AASH2, which has the American Association of State Highway and Transportation Officials. So this AASH2 serves as a critical function in the developing guidelines and standards used in the highway geometric design. So as we design our highway, our geometric design of a certain highway, we refer, we, our guide is the AASH2 the American Association of State Highway and Transportation Officials. The membership of AASH2 includes representatives from the every state highway and transportation department in the U.S. as well as the Federal Highway Administration. So you have to take note that in the construction of a highway in the Philippines, because AASH2 is based on the U.S., is from U.S., of course in the Philippines, the PWHD has their own man, uh, blue book, they call that blue book, which is the standard in the that is being used as guideline in the design for our in the Philippines for our roadways. However, the reference of the creation of the blue book is based on the AASH2. The association has several technical committees that consider suggested standard from individual states. When standard is approved, it is adopted and used by themselves by the member states. So the AASH2 publication, a policy in geometric design of highway and street, provides the standards for geometric design of highways. So basically, uh, this AASH2 serve as the guidelines uh, for the standards that is used for the design of the, for the geometric design of a certain highway. And this AASH2 is being uh, updated by the members of the committee for American Association of State Highway and Transportation Officials. So what are the factors that influence uh, the highway design? So basically, the design of a highway is based on a specified design standard and controls which depend on the following roadway system factors. So those are the factors of that influence that should be considered on the design of a highway. You have the functional classification, design, hourly traffic volume, and vehicle mix, 
design speed, design vehicle, cross section of the highway such as the lane, the shoulder and the median, the presence of heavy vehicles on steep grades, topography of the area that the highway traverses, level of service, available fence, safety, social and environmental factors. For highway functional classifications, so we have to take note that highways are classified according to their function. So functions in terms of the service that the highway provide. So meaning to say they have classification, our highways has classification. So the classification system facilitates a systematic development of highways and the logical assignment of highway responsibilities among different jurisdictions. We have also to take note that highways and, straight and streets are categorized as rural or urban roads, which is dependent on the area in which they are located. So it's either the location is yes, in the rural areas or in the urban areas, or basically whether it is uh, whether it is in the city or in the provinces or in town. The initial classification is necessary because urban and rural areas have significantly different characteristics. So we have to take note also that in the classification of roadways, we have to consider whether the roadways or the highway is to be constructed in rural areas or in urban areas. So basically, because the rural areas and the urban areas have different characteristics with respect to the type of the land, the population density in the influences travel patterns. So those are main classifications or characteristics that distinguishes uh, urban from rural areas. Within the classification of urban and rural highways are categorized in the following groups. So we have here groups that categorize our classification for rural and urban areas. So we have the principal arterials, minor arterials, major collectors, minor collectors, local roads, and streets. So this one is an illustration. This is a figure which illustrates to us the schematic illustration of the functional classes for a suburban road network. So we have here the classifications. We have the legion. So this is a road network for a suburban and there is showing to us the different uh, classification for uh, functional classes in terms of arterial street, uh, commercial area, local street, collector er street, and public area as illustrated in this figure. This one is a figure showing to us the schematic illustration of a functionality classified rural highway network so based on this classification so we could identify here from this figure you have the cities and the town you have the illustration for the village for the arterials for the collectors and for locals so this is a functionality classified rural highway network so for highway design standards so the first step if you are going to design any highway is to consider to sele the selection of geometric design standards. So the selection of the ge geometric design standards should be is the first step if you are going to design any highway. Why? Because it is very essential to select a set of geometric design standards because there is no single set of geometric standards that can be used for all highways so basically uh, there are the, there are many set of geometric standards that can be used in the design of a highway so it is very important first that if you're going to design a highway to choose the geometric design standard that you're going to use as you design a highway so for example the geometric standard that may be suitable for a scenic mountain mountain road with low average daily traffic or the ADT are adequate for a freeway carrying heavy traffic. So the characteristic of the highway should therefore be considered in selecting the geometric design standard. So it's very important 
and that if you're going to select your geometric design standard, you have to consider the characteristic of the highway. So that should be the main factor that you're going to consider if you're going to select a geometric design standard. So this one, this figure is an illustration for the design hourly volume. So this illustration is an example with the figure showing to us the hourly traffic with respect to the hours in one year with hourly volume. So on the x-axis, you have the hours in one year with hourly volume. And on the y-axis, you have the hourly traffic. So this is a design hourly volume that also considered in the design for a highway. So design consideration for the geometric design standard for a certain construction or design of a highway. For the design speed, we have here a tabulation showing to us the minimum design speed for rural collector roads. So it shows to us the type of daring. So then after, with respect to the type of daring, you have the design speed, which is in miles per hour for a specified design volume. Then uh, for, we have also the tape tabulation for the minimum design speed for various functional classifications. So we have here the class functional classes, whether that is a rural principal arterial, rural minor arterial, and so on. And there is a corresponding design speed for each classes. For the design vehicle, uh, we have to select a design vehicle. So that design vehicle is selected to represent all vehicles on the highway, which means that the design vehicle that you're going to select will represent all the vehicles that will be using the highway. So consideration of the design vehicle is the weight, the dimension, the operating characteristic, which is being used to establish the design standard of the highway. In the selection of the design vehicle, you are going to select the largest vehicle that is going to make use, that is going to use the highway. So that is how you're going to select the vehicle for your design. So you're going to select a design vehicle that is very, that is largest, that, that is uh, the largest one that is to be likely to use the highway. The selected design vehicle is used to determine critical design features such as radii at intersection and turning roadways as well as highway grades. So we have here a figure showing to us the typical cross section for two lane highway. So these are the cross section elements. So the first one is the cross section for two lane highways. This one is a figure showing to us the multi-lane highway so this is a half section for a multi-lane highway this one is an illustration for a typical highway curves this is a figure for basic cross slope arrangement for divided highways so we have here two sets each pavement slopes are two ways then the second one each pavement slopes are one way this is a figure for the signation of roadside regions. This is a tabulation for guide for earth slope design. So for example, you're going to have a, a, a design of a highway in a sloping area. So you have your tabulation showing to us, which is dependent on the, the type of cut or field. So there is a specific earth slope for the type of terrain. So it's being specified here in the table. For the maximum highway grades, we're talking about how the slope, uh, the slope of the highway. So the selection, how do you select the maximum grades for highway, for a highway construction, for a highway design? So it is dependent on the design speed and the design vehicle. So we have to take note that accepted, that it is generally accepted that grades of four to five percent have little or no effect. On passengers' car, except for those with high weight or horsepower ratios, such as those found in compact and some compact cars. Cars, as the grade increases above five percent, however, speed of passengers' cars decrease on upgrades and increase on downgrades. So that is how we make use of the design speed and design detail for the selection of maximum grades for highways.